Good evening. I'm Enari Darklor and welcome to Chiriqua. Tonight is so special due to the fact we are starting this year and we will enjoy of our first compilation of our first four episodes. Among each legend, we will enjoy of little musical intermissions. The legends we will listen to are Don Bartolo, Lord of Glamis, Krampus, and Yuki On. I remember the first time I was invited to the normals and luxurious parties the Segovian hosted. Musicians, dance, appetizers, all in huge and big quantities and without skimping on any missing detail. I went through great and joyful talks. The Segovian and his sister were welcoming us, greeting us, and talking with almost any one of us along the evening. When the toes emerged, I thank for accompanying us. I toast for the lady, my sister, my soul, and May 20th, 1701. Many of us looked at each other puzzled, so we decided to continue in the celebration and without bothering the host. At that time, that year was far away to our current time. Not so much ago, a couple of years from that time, Don Bartolo had arrived with just a couple of years from that time, Don Bartolo had arrived with just his sister as a housewife. They came up with little money in their pockets, with debts and almost any real with them. And suddenly they became wealthy and rich almost immediately. Some people whisper and thought that is not God's work. It's the devil himself who brings that wellness and fame all at once. Either the great amount of money they had that they decided to build a great house without skimping on money or opulence. Being invited to their house was a delight. Nevertheless, the rumors about their fortune spread out. Certainly, I did not believe it. This due to each Sunday they went to Mass and gave substantial donations to the church. The years passed. I continued attending their celebrations and feasts. Neither he nor his sister chose someone to marry. More rumors spread out. The time continued to flow and the time seemed to barely pass over them. Suddenly, one night, the night watchman was witness to the riot. Heartbreaking screams and noise coming from their house. Many of us thought it was a robber at first. The man took his courage and bravely came into finding his sister deluded and turned into the highest frightening experience she had ever lived, carrying her throughout death. Whereas, Walking through the house, surrounded by darkness and barely illuminated by the light he carried in his labor, a burn skin smell came up and became stronger and stronger each time. He came into the Segovian's room, finding him burnt, lying and stuck at the roof, provoking him to get out and looking for a priest's help. They both inspected the whole house, and in Don Bartolo's wardrobe found some documents signed with blood, paying with those things mentioned on every toast at his feast. One day, while me and my friends were in Edinburgh, we decided to visit the so famous Glamis Castle. Unfortunately, we realized that we wouldn't have the chance to visit it that day. 
It's a comfort to decide to visit a local bar. We played poker and an unknown hooded man arrived and asked to join the game. We saw each other and accepted. The stranger took his cards and asked, what are you gambling? Our answer was, we are playing just for fun. Maybe it is better this way, said the stranger. Why did you say that? I asked. Do you want me to tell you why it isn't a good idea to gamble around here, especially close to the castle? We nodded our head, accepting, and our guest started telling us the following story. The Count Herberti was too long ago lord of the Glamis castle. All the people knew he was fond of games and gambling. The castle itself was witness of how several men from big and small fortunes were beaten by the Count. One day, the Count of Glamis had a idea of gambling on Sabbath, being badly seen without mentioning how many people were made to gamble with him, carrying them in bankruptcy. After his temerity, he showed a lot of daring challenges to play with whoever wanted to whatever he wanted to. Suddenly, an opulent, dark, tall man, surrounded by heat and a terrible but strong presence, arrived. That man was able to beat the count, hand after hand after hand, until he remained in bankrupt. After reaching his goal, he revealed to be the devil himself, who punished the Count by his daring challenge and sentenced him to play cards until doomsday. After listening to this story, we saw each other nervous and frightened. Now I understand everything. Fortunately, we didn't gamble and we're just playing for fun. You are right. It's better than losing your soul, maybe, said the stranger. After this comment, he showed his hand with a royal flush. After winning, he stood up on the way to the restroom. He took the chance to ask for some more drinks. When he realized he wasn't coming back, we asked the person in charge for our guest, who told us that there was no one else sitting with us the whole evening. When I was a child, I lived in a little town one hour away from Vienna. When the winter holidays were closed, we were reminded how obedient and good we must be due to the fact we were going to receive birch sticks or were going to be taken by Krampus. It is worth mentioning we receive our presents on December 6th by St. Nicholas to those who have been good children. In my family, there were three children, my twin sister Charlotte, Emil, and me. My brother Emil was the youngest, a small boy due to this fact. For a certain reason, if we didn't do something we were supposed to, our parents tell us off or even thought we were punished harder than what Emil could actually get. Emil wasn't just what was called a mischievous guy. He was evil. He used to come into the houses without knocking at the door or without being invited to come in. He was always chasing something, cats, dogs, or the animals we had at home. My mom was always upset with him 
but out of dressing down softly was sent furthermore. In the Nicholas talked, he always received a stick, and he always got furious whereas Charlotte and me received dolls, dishes, desserts, or any other modest present being considered just for girl stuff. He would have taken them. The last times Charlotte and me received presents either were broken or damaged by him that same day or a little time later. So, my last memories with presents thanks to Emil weren't so joyful as I expected. I remember the first time neither Charlotte nor me received presents by St. Nicholas. According to Emil, all good be his presence, and without distracting with us, everything will be for him. And then he said, I'm going to get up and spy on St. Nicholas. If he didn't bring me anything, I'll hit him with this stick. The previous days, he was breaking stuff, my bike included. Although something I feel numb until nowadays is the fact he ended up with our cat's life the previous week to St. Nicholas' arrival. Charlotte and I went along with him that night while we were lying on our beds. He got up and carefully and steadily he opened the door from our room and came out heavy steps and a scream and some animal groans were heard our parents and us ran downstairs and just saw the door open some christmas ornaments broken and Hoof steps printed on the door's dintel. Dad came out running with his boots and not whole wearing his winter coat and an axe he took at the time he came out of the house. He walked until the trail of hoof prints disappeared with a warm hat thrown on the snow. After this, he came back home and continued looking for him after down. When Grandma knew about it, told us, Krampus fulfilled his duty, carrying Emil with him, for being a bad boy. Since then, and despite all the efforts of being strenuously looking for him, neither found nor knew anything about him. After all, Krampus fulfilled his duty. Weeks ago, I came back from Japan. I was asked to live there for six months by the company I work in. After adapting myself to everyday life there, I took advantage of winter vacations in order to go and ski in Hokkaido with my friends. Staying there was fun, comfortable, and delightful. Then, while we were skiing, I saw something that caught my attention. It was a very beautiful woman, wearing a white kimono. I decided to follow her. Maybe she was lost or she needed help. Suddenly, a ski instructor at high speed arrived to stop me. He told me that I was getting far away from the hotel limits and going farther would be dangerous. 
I nodded my head and went back. My friends were looking for me and were worried about me. Due to the fact, I suddenly went and without telling them anything. Once, inside the hotel, and with a little key, I told them what I saw. Tanaka, one of my friends, said, It seems to be that you saw the Yukiona. She is a yokai, a very beautiful woman who calls men to follow her and once with her, she freezes them. It is said that she just does it due to her own desire. Then, it is also said that she freezes men in order they stay with her forever. I had doubts about it. I didn't know what to believe, so I just focused on enjoying our stay. The next day, we decided to go out of the hotel to know and taste the local cuisine. Going out from a restaurant, I met a beautiful girl. She told me her name was Yukiko. I felt like I had seen her before, somewhere, but don't remember where. We passed the rest of the day with her. She didn't say much about herself, but we enjoyed being with her during the rest of the afternoon. Once we said goodbye, we were invited to ice skate in a nearby place. We accepted and we agreed to be there the next day. That night, I dreamt about Yukiona. I was following her until I saw myself frozen without being able to see her face. That day, to avoid thinking about my dream, I just dared and enjoyed the day. There was a pond where we could ice skate and have fun for a while. Tanaka was the only one who remained with us when the others decided to go for a coffee to keep warm. Ice skating with Yukiko was a delight, as if she had been doing this or living wearing skates all her life. Tanaka go out of the place to rest a little. Yukiko and I continued skating and we were getting farther and farther from the shore. Suddenly, I just hear how the ice crunch and I fell down into the cold water. I just remember how I fought and dared to move. The cold water felt like many needles were passing throughout my body. I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I was in the hospital with Tanaka and my other friends. After the doctor's recommendations of noise ice skating on narrow ice and that I was kept under observation the whole night, we decided to go back home as soon as I got out of the hospital. I asked for Yukiko and according to what Tanaka told me, when I fell into the water, she disappeared among the trees, turning into a winter blizzard. <laughs>